You are listening to the Experience 50 podcast for midlife. I'm your host, Mary Rogers. This is episode 235. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about living in the middle. Middles, being in the middle, you know, beginnings and endings are easy and obvious. It's all that crap in the middle that is so difficult. That's what we're going to be talking about today. It's going to be a solo show, just me and you. But before we get to that, I have an announcement. Book Club is back for 2021. I launched this last year. We did three books. They were awesome. And we kind of refined the process that we do for these. And it it just worked out really well for the authors and for listeners. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So we're going to continue in that same way. What we do is four times a year, I will pick a book and we'll do winter, spring, summer, fall. So right now it is winter. I will announce the book and give everybody, you know, four or five weeks to get the book, read the book. And we then get together on Zoom uh, and we talk about the book. We dig into it. We used to do this with the author as part of the Zoom call. And what happened was as a group of readers, we really couldn't say anything critical. (laughs) You know, if you've ever participated in a book club, um, you might want to say, I didn't like it. And you really can't do that with the author on the call in the meeting. So we flipped that around a little bit so that now we do a book club discussion, which I facilitate. We do it over Zoom and I take us through, you know, I mean, I have a structure, there's a an agenda, so to speak, of questions about the book, and a lot of opportunity for open conversation and personal stories. So we do that. And then we have a second book club meeting, like two days later. And that's when the author joins us. And so what we've done as a result of our first book club discussion is we've had a great talk. And then we decide what more do we want to know from this author? After we've read the book, after we've had this discussion, do we have additional questions for the author? If it were a work of fiction, we might ask, why did you choose to write the character in that way? If it's a nonfiction book, we can ask them questions about, you know, well, how did you feel about sharing that piece of information about your story? Or what have the ramifications been in your personal life having shared that part of your story? Or ask for advice from the author if they have expertise in an area that impacts all of our lives. So it's worked out really well. So this time in winter, Here's the book I have chosen, and it's very exciting. They asked to be uh, part of our book club, and I said, absolutely. The name of the book is Why Did I Come Into This Room? A Candid Conversation About Aging. Well, certainly this is right up our alley because number one, how many times a day you know, do I, do you say to yourself, why did I come into this room? And we're all having, I hope, candid conversations about aging. The author is somebody we all know and love. It is former Good Morning America co-host Joan London. She and her team have been a delight for me to work with and get everything lined up. We are going to have our first book discussion on February 17th, and then Joan is going to join us on February 19th. Now, is this for everybody? Yeah, sure, it's for everybody. I hope that you will buy the book and you will hear the recorded episode, which will be this Q&A with Joan London, which we're doing on February 19th. That will release on Friday, February 26th. 
If you would like to participate in either just the general book discussion group or the Q&A session with Joan, that is a benefit of being a patron of the Experience 50 podcast, which you can do for as little as $5 a month, and you will be invited and get the special link to the Zoom meetings. Now, some people have told me they want to participate, but they're just not a participator sort of person. They just want to be quiet in the background, not have their video camera on, not have their mic on. That is totally fine. That is completely fine with me. And so what you do is go to experience50.com forward slash donate. That will take you right to my Patreon page. And once you join, you'll get all the information that you need. We also have other benefits for members beyond book club. So in fact, $10 members get a phone call with me. They sure do. So check that out. And huge thanks to Team Joan, Joan London, and her crew. The book is great. I'm not even quite done with it. I'm almost done with it. Again, the name of the book, Why Did I Come Into This Room? A Candid Conversation About Aging. I'll tell you what, one one thing in the very beginning of the book that really crapped me to show you just how much things have changed in the world, like how we look at 50-year-olds, she mentions in the opening of the book that you remember the old TV show, I think it was in black and white, the Andy Griffith show with Opie, Ron Howard. Remember Aunt B, the old matronly grandmother in the show? The actress who played Aunt B was only 58 years old. Oh my God, I'm 57. I do not see myself as Aunt B. So anyway, get the book, Why Did I Come Into This Room? A Candid Conversation About Aging, written by Joan London. And I would love to have you join our patron group and be part of book club. Excellent. Okay, so back to our topic for today, which is middles. <sighs> middle, middle, who wants to be in the middle? Do you want the middle seat? No. Do you want to be the middle child? Probably not. There's just, you know, monkey in the middle. Everything you ever hear about the middle, it's not good. Just a few weeks ago when I was talking with Tom Vanderbilt, who wrote Beginners, uh, he was a great guest, episode 233. I want to say, if you haven't heard it, that's a great episode. So Tom's book was about beginners and about beginning learning a new skill. And before we started recording, and he and I were just getting to know each other and chatting, I said, you know what? Nowhere in the book do you talk about the middle. <laughs> I said, I, I'm the girl who's all about talking about the middle. You just talk about beginnings. And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, oh, the middle is where all the fascinating stuff happens. You know, you can talk about the mindset of a beginner and everything is shiny and new. He even compares it to falling in love, that feeling of excitement. And I said, sure, you know, the beginning is all about possibilities. And it's once you kind of start down that road of doing something new that things get hard in the middle. There's the passion paradox of, you know, ignorance is bliss that when you when you start something and you don't really know what you're doing, you have this ignorant optimism. And once you start moving into something and it gets hard, they call it the valley of despair where you either have to push through this idea of now you realize just how much there is to know about something, like the Dunning-Kruger effect, where you don't know what you don't know. And then once you know what you don't know, it's like, oh, this is hard. I remember when I, when I first started Think Well, you know what? I'm terrible about moving through the valley of despair because there have been a couple of things within the last four, oh, three or four years that I've been interested in. And once I got to the part where I went, oh, this is really hard, I totally walked away. 
I, I'm, I'm not proud of it, but I'm going to tell you. One was learning Spanish, which I still want to do, need to do. And it is going to be so hard for me, you know, it, in the first moments of thinking, I'm going to learn how to speak Spanish. I have these pictures of myself, you know, being in Mexico or Guatemala or Colombia, speaking like a native. And then I start learning about, you know, feminine and masculine and all that junk. And it's like, oh, this is too hard. This is no fun. I'll I'll just make sure my husband knows how to speak Spanish. Or I wanted to learn how to draw. That was kind of one of my early COVID lockdown ideas is that I would take a drawing class. And I really just wanted to learn how to like draw a flower. Like if I could draw a daisy, I'd be good. And then I found out you need to learn about perspective and color and tone and lighting and shading. And I uh, I was like, well, that sounds like work. I don't want to do that. I just want to draw. I want to draw really cute pictures. <laughs> so that's one version of the middle is learning something and getting to the middle. For us, what I really wanted to talk about is how the middle of a story works. Because here you are and I am in our 50s-ish, somewhere around there. We're in the middle of our story when you look at our whole life as an arc. And this is what I work with, with listeners one-on-one in mentoring sessions, primarily is looking at their story. And what I hear so often, and, and I certainly felt the same way when I hit my early 50s, it's almost like we forgot to plan for this back end of our life. Like we kind of knew about the, you know, we were going to get really old. And we had that picture in our mind that we never want to look at. But we knew that's what the end would look like. And then we also knew about, you know, our 20s, 30s, 40s of building a life and raising kids. And then, you know, we do that. And all of a sudden, we have like 20, 30 years on our hands. And guess what? This is the middle. This is the middle. Some of us thought it was the end. Oh, the end goal is create a career, create a life, raise children, and there you go. (laughs) Guess what? There's a whole lot more. This is that time that we have to create some change or we have to deal with the big changes that have landed in our lap. And there's this feeling almost of being lost. I I hear that phrase all the time. I just feel lost. I don't know what to do next. And here's what I want to tell you. That's what it feels like to be in the middle of a story. And that's right where you are. I'm going to relate this back to business and organizational development, which is where I've spent most of my career. I can remember a a meeting that I had with the CEO of my umbrella organization, and I was hired in to be the leader of an organization that fell underneath them. And we were having a planning meeting right when I had started working there. And this woman took out a yellow legal pad, and on the far left, she drew a sad face. And on the far right, she drew a happy face. She said, so Mary, see this sad face? Organizationally, this is where we are right now. We're in a sad place. We know that we want to be over here in this happy place. And we know what that happy place looks like and what the details are of it. But we have to move ourselves and the organization and our partners all the way from the left sad face over to the right happy face. And smack dab in the middle of the page, she then took her pen and she drew a face that had X's for eyes and a screaming mouth and hair coming out like lightning bolts. And she said, that right there is what we have to move through 
and that's what life is going to be like for you for the next year or two. (laughs) Yay, sign me up. Now, I'm really familiar working in that space with the X'd out eyes and the screaming mouth, because that's kind of what I've done throughout my career is move people from or organizations from one place to another. And it is that middle part that it just hurts. And it's full of change and it's no fun. And I want to talk to you today to sort of compare your own life and that middle part to what if you were writing a story, truly, like a novel? What if your story, you know, was that simple, but just with a confusing middle? How do you write a good middle? So if you think of life, really, it has three acts. In act one, you are introducing your audience or yourself to the characters, to the setting. You are just kind of laying out the scene. You're also laying down the seeds of conflict. So act one in your life is really going to begin with you having no control at all. You know, it's your origin family and where that family lives and what what your parents decided about who they are as people and how they were going to raise their family. And you were just part of it. And then the beginning of your adult chapters, which really is still act one, is you making more and more of your own decisions about who you are and how you are going to live your life and what is going to motivate you. Then comes the middle. Let's call it act two. This is where your character grows, and they, get this, change in response to conflicts and circumstances. The characters set about trying to resolve big problems, and usually the conflict will escalate to a climax, either through internal events or external forces. How does that sound? Does that sound exactly like life? Some of the advice to writers for how to craft that middle part of the story, I think really applies to all of us. And we want a good middle, right? I want a good middle of my story. I'm still in the middle. Here are some of the suggestions to writers for the middle of the story. Change locations for new developments and new challenges to become available. Use the middle to raise uncertainty about your character's goals. Hmm. Increase (laughs) Increase plot complications and character obstacles. Well, gosh, how about we throw in a pandemic? How about we throw in an insurrection? In addition to what's going on in your own personal life of your relationship with your kids, your relationship with your husband, the financial insecurity that so many of us are feeling right now, the health of our loved ones, there. Oh my God, talk about plot complications and character obstacles. We're full of it. Okay, reintroduce themes from the beginning with a different perspective or with a new truth. I love that idea for making your middle interesting. Create subplots that add interest to the main story arc. You know, your subplot could be the things, the decisions that your kids have made, or it could be getting breast cancer, or it could be a divorce, or it could be a sudden inheritance. Something else that moves middles along, the introduction of a pivotal character. 
Ain't that the truth? This sounds kind of like a good thing, bad thing. It can be either. But haven't you had people come into your life that just change everything? And it could be a romantic relationship, but it doesn't need to be. It could be a mentor becomes available to you. I mean, it could even be someone you don't know. Or it could be someone, you know, a new next door neighbor who just has such a completely different perspective on life that it just puts a spark in your brain to change your ways. Introducing interesting, pivotal characters. During the middle of a story, also, it's important to stay focused on your character's end goals. That's one of the hugest parts of the middle, is knowing what your end goal is. What is, what are you, what are you trying to achieve? Some of us thought we were trying to achieve raising a family. Well, check that box, did it. So it's time to reevaluate the end goals for the star of your story. Now, here's what many writers are guilty of. They get to the middle of their story and they rush it. They decide that writing the middle is just too much work and they want to move to the end sooner than would really be natural. And you know what that's called? (laughs) It's called just giving up. And so many midlifers do exactly that. They just, this is too hard. These new challenges are beyond me. What I have right now is just enough. I'm okay with this little slice of the pie that I have. I'm just going to stay here and watch Jeopardy every night for the rest of my life. And that's, you know, playing it safe, playing it safe is one way to move through the middle, but it's going to look just like the end. What makes life interesting, I believe, is watching your life story move from one chapter to the next, which is always driven by change. From being single to being married, married to divorced, one kid to two kids, a bigger house, new bills that you have to pay, more or less, more work, less work, bigger vacations, no more vacations. You're in love, you're out of love, you have new people, new places, new hobbies, new jobs, maybe you join a new church, you get new pets, you try a new hairdo, you take on some new habits, you move to a new home, you get a new car. You've lost loves, you've lost loved ones, you've lost jobs, you've lost friends, you've felt a bit lost here and there. It's the in and the out, the new and the lost, the addition, the subtraction. The years move on, and here you are between young and old. You are in the middle of your story. Like I said, there is a beginning, a middle, and an end to every story, always. And the beginning of the story is just that introduction. The storyteller introduces the characters, the circumstances, the setting, and the backdrop for the story. As that backstory develops and you move into the middle, this is where you get to decide what is the role you're going to play in your story. Are you going to be a hero? Are you going to be a victim? Are you going to be a martyr? Are you going to be a superstar? There's a quote from Margaret Atwood who wrote The Handmaid's Tale, and she wrote this in Alias Grace. I love this. When you are in the middle of a story, it isn't a story at all, but only a confusion, a dark roaring, a blindness, a wreckage of shattered glass and splintered wood, like a house in a whirlwind or else a boat crushed by the icebergs or swept over the rapids, and all aboard powerless to stop it. It is only afterwards that it becomes anything like a story at all, when you are telling it to yourself or to someone else. So true. I remember when 9-11 happened, 
and my husband was out of the country and he was he was in a very remote area of Canada without access to any news, no radio, no nothing. And when he came back to the country after the border reopened, it became very obvious that his 9-11 story was so different from mine and from most Americans because he heard the story all as one story where there was a beginning, a middle, and an end. And for those of us who were here, when we were in the middle of the story, we didn't know if it, how it was going to end. We didn't know if the next day the country was going to be invaded by a foreign force, or if by three o'clock in the afternoon, The events were done, and it would now just be the aftermath. When you're in the middle, and you don't know what is coming next, and you don't know what the resolution of the conflict is, it is very uncomfortable. It is the face in the middle of that legal pad. It's the X'd out eyes and the screaming mouth. Right now, in the story of America, We are stuck in the middle of this story, not knowing politically what is going to happen between now and, let's say, right around inauguration. We don't know. We don't know. It's kind of scary and uncomfortable, and we've been on a roller coaster. And for those of you who in your own life feel like you are in the middle and you feel a little lost I want you to give yourself a little bit of a break here that you need to understand you're in the middle and so it doesn't necessarily make sense. Just like Margaret Atwood said that it's only afterwards that it becomes anything like a story at all. When you are telling it to yourself or to someone else, it's a completed story. Right now you don't know. You might do this you might do that. You might keep everything just the way it is. One of my favorite authors, Anna Quinlan, says, life is not so much about beginnings and endings as it is about going on and on and on. It is about muddling through the middle. Another quote I like, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And a final quote, A.S. Byatt, human beings love stories because they safely show us beginnings, middles, and ends. And we all want that happy, perfect ending. But like Anna Quinlan says, it's really not going to be that way. It's about going on and on and on, just muddling through the middle. So write your own story. Do some you know, as I'm always saying, try this, try that, make, take baby steps in many different directions and see what feels right. Get rid of your limiting beliefs. Make sure that you aren't holding on to emotional baggage from your past. This is your story. You are the author of your own story. You are in the middle. Middles are not easy but it's also where the most interesting things come. A final quote from Gilda Radner. Love Gilda Radner. I wanted a perfect ending. Now I've learned the hard way that some poems don't rhyme and some stories don't have a clear beginning, middle, and end. Life is about not knowing, having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what is going to happen next. Delicious ambiguity. Gilda Radner. Love that. So, hey, go write your story. You are the author. You are the star of your show. You've got this. Bye. 
If you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Experience 50 Podcast for Midlife, subscribe in the podcast player of your choice. You can connect with me on Twitter at E50Podcast, on Facebook, I'm Experience 50, or my private Facebook group, Experience 50 Midlife Community. I'll send you surprises and delights when you sign up for my free midlife community at experience50.com forward slash email. The fun really happens on my listener-supported Patreon page, where I offer bonus content at experience50.com forward slash donate. Do you have a story of your Experience 50 moment when life as you knew it changed? Email me at mary at experience50.com. Thanks again for listening and spreading the word to your friends. You've got this. 